Speedrunning is often seen as an impossible task. One in which most people would say they could never compete. The countless hours spent practicing, routing, and doing runs. All for what? To become 830th place, finally dethroning your arch rival Game Moist. No, you could never, because that's just too difficult. Or maybe that's what they want you to think. Maybe speedrunners have been overstating just how impressive some of these accomplishments truly are. For every magnum opus speedrun of Left 4 Dead 2 that takes 15,000 hours of playtime to beat, there are 25 games out there like Scooby-Doo Mystery Mayhem for the Game Boy Advance that only have three runs on the board and you could probably get world record in in like a few days of attempts. No offense, Isis, I'm sure this run is very optimized. This is all to say that I get a lot of comments on my videos saying how impressive speedruns are. And what I get super duper often is, I could never do this. And you know what I say to that? You're right. With that attitude, you won't, that's for sure. But with a little gamer sweat and some programming socks, just about anyone can get good enough at a game to speedrun it. And even sometimes, become the best in the world. To prove my point, I have invited a good friend of mine, Dante Ravioli, to join me in speedrunning Resident Evil 5, with the goal of becoming the greatest of all time. Dante is known for slaying demons and eating pizza. Wait, 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 wrong one. Dante is known for all sorts of crazy challenge runs and a multitude of games. My personal favorite is him killing Verdugo in Resident Evil 4 by only kicking a door. I'm not kidding when I say I repeated this for two hours perfectly timing each door kick at the exact moment and staying alert the whole time. Let's just say that his willingness to bash his head into the wall over and over again will be useful in this speedrun context. Dante has only ever done one speedrun before when he raced me in Resident Evil 4. Since then, he hasn't done a single speedrun, and this time, we'll be doing his second one ever. For a game that isn't even the same as the first time he did a speedrun. In the last video I did with him, we learned the speedrun for Resident Evil 5 in about 5 hours. We have finally stopped fighting and we're teaming up to take on our greatest challenge yet. Teamwork. We then completed our first run with a 155.55. GG. Totaling only 7 hours of playtime for the both of us and getting a solid 21st place. Only 3rd to last. Not bad for our first run, and with only investing 7 hours, we've made a ton of progress. But this was just the start. In order to truly become the best, we must invest. At least one more day. A few days later, me and Dante regrouped to do a few more runs and see how we can improve. Our first run was solid, but a few routing mistakes, some deaths, and choking on some bosses would make for some serious time saves if we could just clean them up. This should be easy, we thought. But it turned out, after about a week gap between our last play session and neither of us practicing or doing any additional research, the game was pissed. I was rusty as hell and missed my nade throws to blow open the shortcut in the third chapter, making us reset our first real run. I think I missed that one. I think that one worked though. We'll find out. Don't de-rust, de-rusting, we're getting warmed up. We jumped back into our second run and during the first chapter, we both got annihilated by the executioner from the Resident Evil movies. Oh no. He hit you with a combo. Oh God. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, we died. This is all good though. We had some struggles, but this was just us shaking off the rust. Once we both got a good L in, we were finally warmed up for the W. Dante and I have developed our teamwork to a whole new level at this point. Perfectly in sync, making it to doors the exact same time, not even leaving enough for us to be able to yell at each other. I accidentally paused my timer because my map button and my pause button timer were bound to the same thing. So it says we're one minute ahead, but in reality, we're only a few seconds ahead. But our personal best lost a ton of time in late game. In early game, we were really practiced. We deleted our browser history in record time and make it to chapter two in about 14 minutes. de -shroy. This is where the pressure is on. Hopefully the y -prac maps have been hitting and I can throw this grenade better than any NA professional Counter-Strike player. Dante has drawn the line in the sand. At this point, I was dead weight. If I didn't hit this grenade, he was gonna find someone else to speedrun with. Maybe AI Sheva again. I know they have a strangely close relationship, so I wouldn't be too shocked. Because Sheva had molasses for brains, I came to the conclusion that running past most enemies was a viable strat. Fortunately for us, I am a house wrecker, so AI Sheva and Dante will never meet again. Meet your new stepdad. His name is Waifu. That should be it. That sounded promising. Oh, we did it. Nice. Arriving at 2-2, I pick up the sniper and protect Dante while he runs ahead and we collect some treasures. 
Then we do a tactical reset to teleport me up to Dante after I grab the treasure. This is where we can access the merchant and I can upgrade my sniper. In Resident Evil 5, there's a really nice thing that you can do at basically any point of the run if you forget to go to the merchant. If you just restart checkpoint, you can access him. Unfortunately, this menu was really slow as I forgot what to do, so we lost our small lead. We're about a minute behind of our personal best at this point. After some sick Africa drift, we meet up with El Thick Boy and lose another 20 seconds to a slow boss fight. Dude, watch an archer kill us. Imagine. Arriving at chapter three, the Florida of Africa, I don't have my map up and I'm the driver. Frankly, I think the passenger should be in charge of directions and tunes, but I don't think Dante likes Vocaloid as much as I do. So we have to settle for Eurobeat. This is fine though, because it gives a big speed boost when you listen to it. The nice thing about a simpler run like this is sometimes you can just wait for your teammates to do everything. Like a group project, one person does everything and the other takes the credit. So I can fix my hockey problem while Dante does his best to avoid the alligators. My driving now buffed by the soothing sounds of 80's Eurobeat is much better than my last run. Oh, 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 good job. So after Dante rockets the locals and the balls, we get a gold split. That means it's the fastest we've ever completed this section. We're still a bit behind on our personal best, but there's a lot of time save on the Wesker fights. Yeah, okay. Well, we saved a bunch of time there compared to PB, even though we got lost. Good. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of working with Dante is his maturity. A lot of these YouTubers nowadays are overgrown man children who can't take anything seriously. But with only a few days of practice, Dante has kept calm and professional. I can respect that a lot. Pretty I sure did. we do do inventory at the end of this chapter, though. You said doo doo. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. You did, though. You said doo doo. Jokes aside, we're working like a well oiled machine, sharing ammo and stopping enemies from doing anything while defending Josh. We have a weird ammo discrepancy here, so we just switch roles. Uh, yeah, because you're gonna winch. have to hold off the chainsaw guy, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't have any ammo, so. Well, hopefully, I get some when I open what, these barrels. What do you me. normally do? Me? I protect Josh. We Make can sure switch nobody roles. goes near him. Yeah, okay. And I just now realize that the person standing next to Joss just rubs his shoulders and tell him how good of a job he's doing. Do they come from other places? Or like, you just sit here and watch oh, you're good. the other character do They only come from my direction. Oh, okay. Well, the other person is risking their life and limb to fight off the chainsaw guy. Truly an equality of responsibility in this run. I'm not the only one that's rusty though. Dante misses his mind placement to get the fast ore explosion. All right, let's see if my mind like, placement was optimal. Probably, I'm see, God, you're just best, so it's all good. Uh, okay. well, hello? Faith was the wrong option. Fortunately, the speedrun has plenty of nice, mellow backup strategies. At the end of the day, there's only so many ways to dodge another pipe. Actually. Another pipe. <laughs> I totally fucking forgot. Dante was supposed to shoot the machine gun guys, but completely spaced it, so I got wombo comboed into oblivion. Kid practices infinite on me. Uh oh. Oh. Oh god. Uh. Sure. No. Ouch. Oh. Ouch. Got... No, I'm gonna go down. Ow. He's fucking me up. Thankfully, one thing we were not rusty at was the Irving boss fight. After this, we're about two minutes behind. Yeah, baby. Easy peasy, dude. So that was 3-3, three, three, no inventory, no store. Cool. We lost a lot of time there. I'm sure you can guess why. <laughs> nah, we're fine. This is when we continue to get absolutely wrecked by the game. This puzzle has some flaming balls that fall down and roll into a few random patterns. If you get hit by the balls, you won't have enough time to go through the door before it closes. And, well, um, we got balled. A few times, actually. Right in front of the balls? Oh, no. I got balled. Give... After getting enough balls, we continued the Capcom tradition of just walking past bosses instead of actually fighting them. Even with our vastly superior movement, thanks to the ball reset, we lost a minute in this section. The laser section would get a tad bit dicey, but overall it was pretty clean. What happened? Did you just get annihilated by the laser or what? I may have uh, stepped into each and every laser along the way. Unfortunate. Then, once at the laser puzzles, we remember not to barbecue each other alive and save almost all of the time we lost from the ball incident. Nice! Perfect. That Perfect. has to be a time save. We definitely died last time, right? That. Yeah, we died. I killed you with the laser. I remember. Okay, okay. Once we get to the crab boss, I missed the rocket two times for good luck. 
What? Ooh, I'm good on ammo now. Oh shit. It's okay. I shot him right in the mouth, but he didn't die. So I did this oh. thing where you hit the wrong button. <laughs> Unfortunately. But the movement in the rest of the level was really good, so we save another 30 seconds. Then in the bug section, we save a ton more time by not getting stuck on a box like last time. I'll probably miss it. You'll make it though. Oh God, run. No, I got it, we're good. Back down to almost two minutes behind. Not a great run, but this late game is all gold splits. I just had to jinx it though, because in the next section, I would let Dante get stabbed to death by a giant cockroach because I forgot to use my rocket propelled grenade on it. Seems ineffectual though. I'm pretty sure cockroaches can survive anything. Who, me? Yeah, or it's me who does a thing. No, but... you, you, oh, oh, well. Well, thankfully, like the cockroaches we are, me and Dante survived this section, even though it gets a little bit scary. Now it's time for the comment of the day. This time we have invalid user 9889, who says, I have a question. How do you train your speedrun mentality? Heck, what even kind of mentality does a speedrunner need? Honestly, I don't really think there is a speedrun mentality. It's just a growth mindset thing. I was having a conversation a while back with my chat and it's the theme of the video, so it fits this topic perfectly. I was saying how I appreciate how people find what I do super impressive in regards to speedruns and whatnot, but I think people mystify it way too much. When I was in college for a short time, I took a class on skill development and it was super influential. We wrote a book about skill acquisition and it said something along the lines of, yeah, it may take 10,000 hours to become a master at something, but it takes less than 100 to become better than 90% of the population at any given skill. Like, for example, if you spent 10 hours researching and practicing how to cook, your cooking skills will drastically improve in an insane pace. Actually studying and applying the skill from a trusted source with only a very small amount of time invested, you can increase the quality of your cooking overall by an insane margin. Improvement is a curve, in most things at least. The first 100 hours or so is an exponential improvement, then you get diminishing returns. There isn't much incentive to be a master at anything, but if you just spend a bit of time, you can become competent at everything. This video seeks to show you that this is true, even for hobbies like speedrunning. Me and Dante have a total of nine hours in the game by this point in the video, and we're already like top 20 in the world. You train this mentality by just doing it. I know it's a bit cringe, but if you just get up and go do something, then in no time at all, you'll be good at it. Because most people just do nothing. So by doing the simple act of doing something, you set yourself at a huge advantage. Lecture's over. Seven minutes is all I can spare for that lecture. The Wesker fight is one of the parts of the run where we have the most time to save. And for some inconceivable reason, we just couldn't get him to chase me. Okay, let me come over here. I saw the speedrunners. They went over here, so... Hello? He really doesn't like Shava. It turns out I wasn't expecting the door. Small bit of trolling on my side. Oh, I was supposed to investigate the door, uh, apparently. Thank you, chat. Now it's time for Dante to blast Jill's breast control device over and over again so I could tear it clean off. This was definitely a practice run at this point. We both have forgotten what to do and had to shake off some rust still. This was entirely to be expected, especially since we only got together once to play before this and this is about a week later. Normally, if you want a vast amount of improvement in a short period of time, that you would want to be playing multiple days in a row. But me and Dante are both busy dudes. Okay, well ignore that, I swear we're busy. Fortunately, even this was not powerful enough of a time loss to kill our run. There was still potential for a personal best if we do the rest of the game clean. We saved almost a minute on faster JJ kills and not getting tased on the boat. This run I also remembered to get the fire grenades to skip the entire section here. In the last run I forgot to grab them, so we just had to go around the long way. This saved a ton of time. We leave the boss fight at about four and a half minutes behind. Uh, you gotta shoot him with a rocket. Yeah, I, uh, it wasn't in a hot spot. Oh, I, I like tried to hot swap okay. a couple times and I was like, where the hell is the rocket? Oh, it's not, <laughs> not in any of those. During the fight on the way to Wesker's total global saturation, I get snuck up on by the cockroach and he wants Wesker to see his plan to fruition. So he gives me some belly rubs. Oh Let's my God. Behind you, behind you. Ah! Uh oh. <laughs> Okay, the reset is right there, though. So yeah, it's not, not a big reset. Then, out of pure rage and jealousy, Dante quits the game. I'll be so upset. The you left the game? The, the host has removed me. Actually, his game crashed, so he had to rejoin. Thankfully, this would mean he had plenty of time to mentally reset for the Wesker fight to come. 
Unfortunately, it still went pretty bad, but it did go much better than the time prior. So we saved quite a bit of time here. Do it now! Think of this shit, Wesker! It just all comes down to Dante's ability to hit this final rocket, which he hits on the first try. Yeah, there we go. There, and then I wait for him to do two slashes, and then boom! Oh, nice, let's go! We end the run with a 157.58. Worse than our first run, but huge improvements all around. Now that the warm-up run was over, it was time for me and Dante to dominate this game. I just need to eat a bit of pasta while Dante gets his ass beat. This is the perfect time for me to eat my food. <laughs> Ow. We exact our revenge on the Executioner, sending him back to the movies. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. Cool. The main thing we could save time on is remembering when we need to go to the menu and only doing it then. Also, it turns out, thanks to Demented Salad, a runner and moderator for RE5, I accidentally was timing in real time instead of removing the loads. So I changed the comparisons and yeah, so we actually did PB by like 13 minutes. It was actually a 142. That makes way more sense. So, okay, apparently we were comparing against real time. So like, we, I think we might have actually PB'd, yeah, last run. Oh, really? So we have a 142. For the leaderboard no way yes yeah, really? yeah okay i did feel like it was faster yeah i thought that so too that would make way more sense now that we are fueled by this newfound progress in my pasta we zoom through the first chapter and into the nade lineup which i nail of course because i am the best a legend first try second try i think tell me if i got it yep i got it okay come on Let's go! After the chapter 2-1, we already are 35 seconds ahead of our brand new personal best. We lose a small bit of time on the menuing before the next boss and even lose more time on the Gigante fight. But we're still ahead and we have tons of time save. When we're visiting Florida this time, I have the map actually up so I know where to go. And my driving is sick nasty, so I don't crash a single time. Unfortunately, Dante gets some bad RNG, wakes up, walks outside, and there is an alligator in his trash bin. The trash pandas here are way less friendly. We'll be fine. Oh, the croc! By the next chapter, we're a whole minute ahead. This driving was much better. Dante then also hits his mind placement perfectly, and we match our PB perfectly with this chapter. This time, we actually remember to kill the turret guys too, so no wombo combo. Then, once again, we showed Irving the works. We arrive at the temple, and Dante barely makes it past the balls, just in time, saving a bunch from the last run. Oh my god, just barely. I don't miss the rocket on Joe's Crab Shack either, and we save a ton of time. Nice. Nice! First try, hell yeah. That is a... That's, I think that's the first time we got it. Uh, first try? Quick, so. I think so. Yeah, that's right. I go first here, okay? You deal with I'm the liquors behind me. That works. I don't like it the other way around. I get scared. You always want to maintain a line of sight with the scary things. They disappear. Like, do you ever, like, have a... Sp oh, my goodness. There's, like, a spider in your room. It's, like, kind of scary. It's not that scary. Until you, like, look away, and then the spider's gone. And ah, now, now yeah. it's terrifying. Actually, I had to plug up a hole in my room. It was a spider hole. Oh my god. Very terrifying. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> I would burn Don't the whole house down. Don't worry, I haven't seen any spiders since. So I think I did a good thing. They probably, uh, unfortunately perished in the, uh... In the hole. In the hole. Unfortunate. While defending myself from Dante's wall spiders, I missed the cycle for the conveyor belt, so I had to go around, losing a small amount of time. I killed the next spider with a rocket launcher for good measure, so we don't die to it this time. And now for the moment of truth the first Wesker fight. I remember to open the door, so we save about a minute. Very complicated speedrun. Dante clutches out the Jill fight, and we nail it on the first attempt, saving about another minute. Smiley face, yeah. it'll work anyways. It works! It worked? Work? Oh my god! Fuck it! Fuck yeah! Improv. First time! <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh my god. That was great. By having a really clean menu, then doing the level in a simple, efficient way, we save another two minutes at the end of chapter 6-1. We then fight our way through the hentai, and even in a speedrun, waifus get fucked. Oh my god, I Wow, you just off. got totally fucked by that, didn't you? Yeah, that's payback, that's karma. Another 30 seconds saved. Then we have a really clean JJ room, and actually do Wesker's nighttime fight, our worst nemesis, first try. There we go. Nice! This saves an insane amount of time. Now it's all down to Dante's ability to hit this last shot. The culmination of all of our practice. A total of 12 hours of playtime, all coming together in this one moment. And he misses. 
Oh fuck, I missed, I missed, reset. If you were wondering why it's been a while since Dante has uploaded, it's because he gambled his whole channel on this shot. My splits were paused for about a minute, so the final time was a 134.04. If we didn't mess up the final boss, we could even have done it in a 132. And that's how Dante and I became the best in the world at Resident Evil 5. Well, the ninth best. But that's still pretty good. I mean, with only 12 hours invested, top 10 in the world? It's honestly not that impressive compared to other stuff that I've done, but this time around, I just wanted to show you that you can do it too. Whatever you're thinking about doing, but are hesitating because you think it's gonna be too hard? Just get off your ass and go do it. Just a bit of time investment and you will be where you want to be. Dante has never even speedrun before this. He's maybe had 20 hours of experience total and look at him. He's already top 10 in the world in a popular game series like Resident Evil. And if he can do it, then so can you. Good luck and stay stylish.